just came from seeing Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, and it was amazing. It really was a great time. I haven't had this much fun watching this movie since Prisoner of Azkaban. Like, that was, like, the, literally the last Harry Potter movie that really made me super duper excited to see Harry Potter. It made me crave for more Harry Potter. But I'm glad that we were able to end the series on a very, very high note. And so this is going to be sort of a free-range reaction and feelings on the movie. Um, but first, the previews. Um, I, the movies I'm looking forward to that they showed in the thing, Sherlock Holmes 2. Oh my god, Robert Downey Jr. in drag. I was just kind of like, Because <sighs> it's like, I love Robert Downey Jr. I love him so much. And in this movie, I get Ro Alan Rickman too. So, Robert Downey Jr. and Alan Rickman in like a time slot. I'm just like, ah, my heart. But it was amazing. I want to see that. Cowboys and Aliens. I know people say it's corny, but I'm just like, it's fucking Harrison Ford being a fucking cowboy. Like, what? I hope Clint Eastwood makes a cameo. Um, the Dark Knight Rises, which actually showed twice. It showed in the beginning, and then tw it was the last. It showed in the beginning of the whole preview reel, and then it was the last preview reel again. And I think everyone was kind of like, "What's going on?" But yeah, that I'm excited to see. Still don't think Anne Hathaway should be Catwoman, but everyone must be like, "Trust Nolan." I'm like, I trust him. I just don't like Anne Hathaway, so we'll see how she does with Selena. Um, then, of course, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, which I know is fucking corny, but I want to see that movie so bad. I want to see that because I love Planet of the Apes, the original, not the Tim Burton one, and I love monkeys. You know I love monkeys. You remember the monkey blanket situation? I love monkey. I fucking love monkeys. So, I want to see the rise of them. I want to see the rise of the Planet of the Apes. Then the movie started and the first scenes just had me just like chills like I had chills in the beginning of the movie because I'm just thinking to myself this is the last one and then I did everything with Snape and then we see Dobby's little tombstone Dobby a free elf I almost teared I have seen Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows part one one two three times okay and I have cried at Dobby's death scene every single Time. It hurts me right here. And it's the only Harry Potter major death I've ever died to, including the ones that happened in this movie. And I'll talk about why I didn't cry at their deaths when I get to them, but that part just kind of had me just like, <gasps> Dobby, you're never going to come back again. And then I sedated myself to get ready for the rest of the experience. I really liked the tone of this movie. I mean, the, the part one, which I, I equally love, I put them as a one movie all together, so I just call it one movie. But part one was great because it was really about the characters. It was like a character-driven story where you see the drama and you really get an emotional connection to these characters so that in this half of the movie they can just do what they gotta do. It's kinda like boom, 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 boom. Let's, let's get this show on the road. And it was, it was great. It was great to just get st plot, 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 story, story, story. Just get it out the, just get it on. And starting with the whole Gringotts, um, sequence, it was just, that dragon, holy shit. It, th that whole air scene thing was just so much fun. It was like an Indiana Jones movie kind of thing. Just like them climbing up and the things keep multiplying. And there's a sense of tension throughout this entire movie. I mean, there are parts in this movie where even though I know it was going to be okay and this person wasn't going to die, I was still like petrified and like worried. Like, please let them be okay. Please let them be okay. And that's a really testament to how good this movie is because usually when I know a character is gonna die I'm just kind of like whatever and I was like that for like other times but in this movie I felt tension for these people because you d you never know and I have to tell you something like I never call myself bisexual because I don't have a sexual attraction to women even though I can find some of them to be sexy or attractive but Emma Watson Emma Watson fucking love that woman. Yo, I don't know where it came from, but I developed a uber hardcore lesbian crush on Emma Watson. Like, like it's nobody's fucking business. Like, it hardcore. When I went to the premiere to like see the actors and stuff, I think I screamed the loudest for her and Alan Rickman. Like, I used to be in love with Draco, like fuck Draco. 
I'm not. Remind me after this finish. And when she was out wearing that Bellatrix Lestrange costume. I was all kind of like, yes. There's this one scene where they fall and they like you see right down her dress and it was like clean, which I was just kind of like, oh god. I have become that way. I was checking her out that entire movie and I'm just like, you are so fucking hot. And I don't know why I think she's so fucking hot, but she is. And it's like, I love her as her money, but then I like watch her when she's like just Emma playing someone else. I'm just like, you're still hot. So it's not even like, like her money. It's, it's you, girl. It's you. And I love you. But yeah, awesome. And when Voldemort came and killed all them people, everyone in the theater, oh, I went to the theater in my neighborhood, so it's a whole bunch of blacks and Puerto Ricans and Latinos in this bitch. So when Voldemort comes in and starts handling shit, everyone's like, damn, oh shit, damn. He was fucking mad. And it was hilarious listening to all the little back and forth chatter. It was, it was just fun. And let's see what happened after that. Yeah, the whole scene. And then another testament to my pervertedness, when they're all like stripping to like change clothes, I'm looking at Emma like, what are you gonna take off your clothes? Like, I look at all these pale, pasty boys. Emma, are you gonna take your shirt off? No. When they go back to Hogwarts, I was kind of like, Hogwarts, Hogwarts, gotta get back, Hogwarts, Hogwarts. Not in the seat, but in my mind, that was my reaction. Because it was just like, it was great to be back at Hogwarts. I mean, I missed it in the first movie, the first part one. And I don't know why, but I just, I love seeing everyone there. I love seeing Neville. Ah, Neville. Neville is like synonymous with badass. It's like, Neville! Dun, 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 killing snakes up in this bitch. But yeah, I love Neville. And then all of a sudden, I'm just like, and then Luna, I don't know how Luna managed to just jump from, like, where they were to, like, boom, I'm at Hogwarts. I don't know how. I don't remember from the books if they explain that part. I was happy to see her, though. And I'm just like, Luna, you're my favorite character. I'm glad you're going to survive this experience. And then I saw Cho Chang. I'm just like, Cho Chang, why are you in school? I thought the same thing when I heard her in the books. I was just like, you, didn't you graduate, bitch? Like... Did you get left back? Can you get left back in Hogwarts? I don't know if they have summer school programs, but I'm just like, Cho Chang. So she was in uniform and everything. I'm just like, Cho Chang, what it do? But I was glad to see Cho Chang. Hogwarts scenes were just the best. Like that scene with Snape and Bogogonald, I was kind of like, Snape, I love you, but Bogogonald, get that ass. Get that ass. Get that ass. And it was awesome. And the thing about it, I, I'll talk more about how I feel about Snape movie ver Snape versus book Snape, but I just love how Alan Rickman just acts and everything has to be like long and drawn out. It's just like, he will be equally. I'm just like, wow. It's not even like, that's just, that's like not even enough. It was literally like 5, 10, 15, 20, next word. And I love it because I love Alan Rickman, but it just like, it, it just makes me just go like, Alan Rickman's on stage, Alan Rickman's on my screen. I don't even see Snape, I just see him when he says his lines sometimes. But, um, that was fun. And just McGoggenal being all like, I always wanted to do that spell. There are so many little scenes in this movie that are just so charming and so cute and so much fun. And the audience made it fun because there were scenes where, or this was a funny one, um, when Ginny came on screen for like the first time, there was literally a collective groan when she came. I was dying because I don't like Ginny. I was just like, Ginny, go away. But like everyone, it was like, like Ginny, I was like, in my mind, I was like, oh god. And everyone was like, oh god, around me. I'm just like, my people, write her. It was hilarious. And it's so funny because I really feel like they don't like her. And I feel like the movie makes Ginny just a really dull character. I mean, in the books, I don't like her, but at least she's kind of interesting. In the in the movies, she's just there, and it just kind of like, just go away. Please. Like, you're ruining my visual experience. Even when the kisses happen, like when, like, Ron and Hermione's kiss, which is kind of like, okay, that's cool. I can see why that would happen then. Because they, because you know, they never go, go and dispute in these books or do any of the house elves stuff, which was kind of upsetting, but you know, I knew they weren't going to do that. It cost too much money to have all those visual effects. So that kiss was still good. And when that kiss happened, everyone was like, woo! Yeah! And 
and like everything like that. Even I, who don't even like Ron and Jenny, Ron and Hermione, was kind of just like, get it, Rupert, get it, Emma, whatever. When Ginny and Harry kissed, everyone was kind of like, oh god. Ugh. There was like nothing, like no emotional thing. Just when Voldemort is bringing back Harry's body, and Ginny's like, no, Harry. He's like, silence, you stupid girl. Everyone just started dying. They're like, yeah, Voldemort, tell that bitch what's what. Seriously, this is my crowd that I'm in, so I'm dying because this is like my dream crowd. People who feel how I feel. But, you know, it was just, it was fun. I loved things, I loved like almost everything about this movie. The only complaints I have about these, this movie are things that I have complaints about the book about. Like, I hate the whole, you know, we don't give a shit about Slytherin thing. Like, literally when Pansy Parkinson was like, Oh, you guys, do we a tournament? And then Filch comes in and McGonagall's like, take all the Slytherin down the stage. I'm just like, really? You're gonna punish the entire fucking house for this one basic bitch. And it pisses me off because I... Slytherin is my, is my house. But just even so, it's so double-sided. And then they try to make it be like, oh no, we're all equal in the end. Like with the Epilogue, how it's all like, oh, Slytherin is a good house too, you know. But it's like, oh... How is anyone supposed to know that when throughout this entire series you basically said that everyone in Slytherin is equal and the only exception to that rule is like Slughorn who's still kind of shady and Snape who while is an interesting character and kind of an anti-hero he's still pretty much an uber douche. So you mean to tell me that you can either be an anti-hero uber douche or a sneaky scabby guy and that's basically the two goods of Slytherin that we get. And it's like no one shits on Gryffindor for like Peter Pettigrew or anything like that or even shits on like the Gryffindors who are bullies and jerks and not even really good characters but it's like so there is it's ultimate evil and that's always kind of annoyed me about the book series in general and in the movie it just was like it was so blatant because everyone else was kind of just like the crowd was kind of like clapping and shit like that when it when it happened and it's kind of like why are you clapping though like you're telling all these kids that they're just it's evil because they're in this house and it's like even though they try to be like oh no Slytherin came back because I know in the um JK Rowling said that you know Slytherin actually did come back I'm just like but you don't see that you just see them being the bad guys this entire series and you try to tell us at the end it's okay to be a Slytherin. It's like, no it's not. You basically told us from day one they're all douches. And you can't just retract that statement now and base that on a scene that we never got to see and two characters who are not really the best of people to represent this house. I mean, you get variety about in everything with every other house. Even Hufflepuff, whoever, whoever one makes fun of in the fandom, Hufflepuff at least has, you know, decent people in its thing to combine everything. Otherwise, in the, it's, Slytherin is kind of one-sided, and that always pisses me off. Um, I love Neville and Luna's little thing together. That really was just so cute to me, and I'm so mad that they didn't get together at the end of the series. I'm just like so pissed. I'm just like, damn it! Neville and Luna is mad adorable, and I don't put them together because they're like the two outcasts. They honestly look really cute to me, and Neville is just such a fucking badass. I fucking love Neville. Like, Neville just get it all day. I just love love Neville so much. I just love how he just came up from being like a little insignificant character just basically being badass. Like that's how you do good supporting characters because he always had an in him to be a badass. You see that from like the first time we met like when he um tries to stop Hermione and then from leaving to go do anything to not get in trouble. Like he has balls. He's always had them but now when it comes push to shove he will take them out and be like BAM smack you with it. So yeah that was awesome. And I love Luna. I love how like she's like Harry Potter listen to me right now. I was like, yes, Luna, dominate your shit. Tell him to listen to you. Listen to Luna, bitch. Listen to him. Um, all the fight scenes were just fun to watch. And watching the wizard magic just go back and forth and back and forth and everything. It was, it was, I was never bored in this movie. Not for one second. I wasn't concerned about the time. I it's like two hours and ten minutes. I felt like it just flew by. And I was getting so antsy. I'm like, oh my god, it's almost over. I can't deal with it. It was literally, like heartbreaking. I didn't cry though. I didn't cry, but it was heartbreaking because I wanted it to last so much longer. But to get to the, let me talk about the deaths and then I'll talk about Snape. Because those are two things that I really feel like to talk about in the context of how I feel about the movie and just the movies in general when it comes to Snape. Okay, so the death scenes in this movie did not affect me. And I really 
don't know why, other than the fact that it did not have any sort of real emotional resonance for me. And I was, I wanted it to, I really did. Like, I came in there thinking, I'm gonna fucking die when Snape and Fred die. Because I love them, they're my favorite, two of my favorite characters. I'm gonna die when they die. But Fred's death was kind of just like, he's just laying there. And for some reason in the books, it hit me so much harder. But like watching the movie, I was just kind of like, I was sad and I was kind of watery, but I didn't start bawling like I do with Dobby. And I still do with Dobby. Every time I tell you, streaming down my face with Fred watery. And I only like Dobby, I don't even like Dobby a tenth of how much I like Fred. But Dobby's death is so poignant. It's like you're he's holding Dobby and he's watching him die. With Fred, you just see the body. And I feel like in the books that's a little bit more tragic, but in the film it's just kind of like, it sucks. But that's really it. You know, Tonks and, and Remus, I don't like those characters to be good. I mean, I like Remus, I don't like Tonks because she's just a plot device for like, the kid to be born and then recycled the whole Harry Potter thing with a new generation. And Remus is kind of like, he just kind of was all whiny and whatnot, and I was kind of like, I don't really care about either of you. And so, their deaths had no resonance with me. And then, Snape's death was like, horrible for me, but it did not hurt the way I thought it was gonna hurt. Like, when Snape dies in the book, it's kind of like, I don't get sad until I'm done with the prince's tale and I realize, oh my god, he's been like trying to help Harry the entire fucking time. And here, coming in there knowing that, I wasn't sad. I just really wanted to see those scenes that proved he's been trying to help Harry the entire fucking time. And also, I love Alan Rickman. I love Alan Rickman as Snape. But at the same time, and I know I'm probably going to get some comments about this, but is that right? I, I can handle it. I can handle that. He's not... Snape. Snape. <sighs> how do I explain this? Let me, let me finish the death scenes and I'll leave it into how, I, how he's not the same thing. Um, Bellatrix Lestrange's death. You know, I don't know. I just love Bellatrix Lestrange. I love her so much. I don't even know why. She's just a cool fucking character. And seeing her get killed was kind of just like, uh... Everyone was clapping. I'm just like, I know I should clap too, but I just like... Damn, why had to be Mrs. Weasley? I really wanted Neville to kill Bellatrix. I still kind of want, you know, Neville to be like cutting her. And Voldemort's in. death was very, because Voldemort's death is the most important death in the movie. It was very, it was better than the book. I feel like that was an improvement because his death in the book for me was very anticlimactic. But with this, you see the visuals and everything that happened, you just see like, him just started to disintegrate and everything. That was just cool to me. Like, I was like, okay, fucking Voldemort is dead. Yes. I felt it. Where in the book, it's kind of like, oh, that's how he died. Because it happened after this really long-winded speech. And they cut that out. And I was like, good. Because I really don't like that speech. It kind of takes away from the intensity of the battle itself. And it's put more, like, from the, in the movie, they put it in the end. He, like, explains why the one didn't work for Voldemort. And I'm just like, I like that better. It works better. Whereas, like, you can't have that in the middle of a battle scene, like, a really intense scene between these two people who are rivals for all time. And he's like, well, if you had paid attention, Voldemort, you would have known that it wasn't Snape who owned the wand. It was Draco, because Draco was the one who did this. And it, 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 it's annoying. And plus, I never believed that Harry could really deduce that. Because I'm like, who told you that? Did Hermione tell you that that's what happened? But, yeah, Voldemort's death was awesome. And not sad, because who gives a fuck about him? But it was just awesome. And, like, Voldemort. Um, Rath finds he has such a good time playing Hockey and Voldemort this episode. Like, Voldemort was just like, hi, hi, hi. I love, like, the part where, like, he comes over and, like, Neville swings over. It's just like, it's, there's a lot of funny scenes in this movie. It's just, like, all over, just a great fucking experience. Like, I have not liked a lot of the Harry Potter movies. Like, I like three. I kind of like four. And then I love this two-parter. And the first two movies are, like, okay because they're really good adaptations but at the same time they just kind of fail as movies well they, and then i don't like the fifth movie i don't like the sixth movie at all like the sixth movie to me is fucking boring the fifth movie is okay because at the end you get lucius malfoy who looks really fucking hot in that leather outfit which he got to wear in this movie again but overall eh, eh. the series it has a lot of highs and lows and good points and bad points but as a whole i've never really loved loved any movies besides three, 
and the Deathly Hallows two-parters. So I, I just love that this series ended so good for me. Like it really brought together all the things I loved, all the characters, even the epilogue, which is kind of like corny in the books, has a good visual re resonance. Like when you see that scene, it's cheesy, but it works so much better in that medium than it would in a book medium. It's kind of like a bland way to end a really intense book, but it is a great way to end such an emotionally kind of movie. It's really weird how that kind of works out, but um, yeah, I liked it. Now, Snape. Okay. Snape is probably one of my favorite, if not my ultimate favorite character in the Harry Potter books. Because he is, and has always been to me, an emotionally complex guy. Like, ever since book one when we realized that, like, he was trying to save Harry the entire fucking time, I feel like, I, when I read that scene, because I read the books backwards, I read it 2-1 and then 4-3. And so I didn't know about Snape saving him until I read the first one again. And when I read it, I'm just like, wow, so Snape does somewhat care for Harry. I mean, why would he go through all this trouble if he really hated him? And from then on, I've always kind of kept my eye on Snape, thinking, like, this guy has a lot of stuff going on for him. And when people will be like, I hate Snape, I hate Snape, I'm like, I know you don't like him, but I think there's something more going on there. But he's still petty. He's still a jerk. He's still a horrible teacher in terms of how he treats his students. Like, he's not a great guy when it comes down to how he is in the book, whatever. He has good qualities about him. He has amazing qualities about him and he's a complex character probably the best written character in the entire series next to probably Dumbledore because he's got like so many fucking layers too but Dumbledore's always been kind of like you know Obi-Wan-ish whereas you know this guy is pretty much like Darth Vader in a way so I I love Snape in a literary sense and also as a character study he's just fascinating and really interesting and in the movies He's great because the actor he has commands such stage presence and can deliver lines with so much gusto and vibrato that, like, you you get called to attention when, when he's on screen. Like, Alan Rickman's there, I'm like, Ten Hut, you know? And you really... He commands the screen. Alan Rickman is great at that. I don't know why he hasn't had an Oscar yet, but he does that amazingly well. But he doesn't become... Snape completely, in my opinion. If you disagree, please put it in there. I don't mind. But Snape has this way of just getting angry and getting really pissed off. Like, in books, in books, he's like, don't call me a coward. This whole hateful, venomous way that he interacts with, you know, Sirius and Remus and all these characters. I don't get that when I see Alan Rickman play that character. Also because they fucking shit on Alan, they fucking shit on Snape's characterization all the fucking time. It pisses me off. Uh, like, the biggest flaw of these movies to me is how little they use Snape. It irritates me to fucking hell. And I get that they probably didn't think it was going to be big because when the movie started off, the books weren't finished. But I'm just like, you know what? It's such a big error that it irritates me. Like, what I will say, that the reason why some people come to that movie and not cry when Dobby dies is because Dobby has not appeared in the movies from book from movie two. We're in, since book four, we've been seeing Dobby. And so when he dies, it hurts to see him die. In the movies, like, I love Snape and like Alan Rickman. And the way Snape dies is so, like, you don't even see it, but it's so violent. And it's just kind of like, I'm just kind of like, oh my, god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, when he was getting killed. And even the way that ending scene was, like, it was just wonderfully acted. And that was like, alright, I feel Snape, because Alan Rickman can do that kind of emotional kind of thing with Snape, that's great. But then he doesn't do pissed off, angry, wow, childish Snape. You know, you get like the Snape that has kind of like a command. He doesn't come off as a whiny adult who's taking out his frustrations on a kid. He just comes out as kind of like, you know, condescending, which is kind of like, a lot of teachers can be condescending, but like, they don't get him as a jerk at all. Because all of his scenes from that are cut off to develop something else or to do something else that like he doesn't become a horrible fucking person. People who watch the movies mainly don't like him because of that he killed Dumbledore. And we know that that's like horrible and whatnot. But like you don't see him do horrible and 
painful to watch things. Like, even something small, like when Hermione's teeth got that spell in the fourth book and they got large and shaped, like, I can't really tell the difference. Like, that's a dick move and that's horrible. And it makes me hate him so much because he's a jerk. And it makes his reveal so much more, you know, complicated to show. Like, this guy is basically making fun of who he was when he was a kid. Like, basically, everything he does and everybody he picks on. It's like the same thing he did with himself. Like it's, it's this weird thing where you feel like he's doing it because he wants them to be tougher like him. It's like this really weird character study thing. Like even if you disagree with me and he's just being a jerk, it's still more interesting than what we get from Snape in the movies. And it weakens Snape completely. And what makes me pissed off about The Prince's Tale is like while I, I watch him, it's like this is fucking amazing, I loved it. That whole sequence where they show it in the movie was just beautifully done, although I was kind of upset that they kept having voiceovers after after the actual dialogue in the movie because I'm like trying to listen to both things, like what are they talking about? And I can't really pay attention because I'm like listening to like one set of dialogue and listening to like the underscore dialogue. It's kind of like, okay, you're really confusing my brain right now. And I'm trying to concentrate on like story. And Little Snape was so cute. Little Snape! But I was kind of upset. And also, my biggest problem with the fifth movie is that they cut out Snape's pensive scene. The scene where you go into his memories. And that pisses me off because that is important. That is undeniably important to Snape's character. It's like, he was like, well it was there. It was like five seconds long. Don't even come at me with that. It's five seconds long. It's not even that good. And you don't see shit. Pointless. There's nothing to develop anything. They don't even show everything about the prince's tale. They don't show, like, in the movie, which pissed me off, because, like, they don't show the, the mudblood scene in the fifth one, so they don't get the continuation of it in this one. You don't see, like, that whole falling out thing. It's, it's kind of like they just show the best parts of him, and I'm just like, you don't get that same snake. You don't get that same complicated, jerk, but really strong character. You just get, like, the guy who was just kind of quiet and mysterious. Qu excuse me, quiet and mysterious. That's what you get from these movies. That's the same that you get to see. You don't see the Snape that you get in those books. And I love both Snapes, and I feel like the Snape that Al Rickman portrays is still a great character, but it's the screenwriter's job, in my opinion, to put those things in there to develop that character. And they don't. That is the weakness of the, that's the, weakness of the movies as a whole. They do not command the same strength as those books and, and it cannot be i've always felt like i would love to see like a harry potter like animated series or like a mini series something like that because it'd be easier to do in the sense of like you know it would cost money because of the drawing and stuff but you could take the time to build up these things and it would be awesome i'd pay i if i had money i would pay to support that and that way we would get to see that jerk off snape who's hard to care about and then when you learn about him you almost feel dirty for feeling bad for him but then you can't help but feel bad for him because you realize he hates who he is and he hates seeing himself in any other person but um so i love this movie i now that the franchise is over <sighs> no, i'm gonna do an entire probably very long video about the harry potter franchise and I will take any questions that you guys have that you want me to answer about how I feel about certain things in the franchise and stuff. And I will talk about them. Like anything you want to talk about in about the movies and the books or both or whatever and other parts of the fandom, I will discuss in this video. Like if it's not too many questions, it'll probably be like one long video. If it's too, too long, I'll just make it into a two-parter. But I will do that. And I'll answer any questions, I'll answer all your questions, and I'll have this from today, when this video is posted, until next Friday. And then I will start recording and stuff and probably and have it up by that Monday, the following Monday. Now, here are the questions you cannot ask me, because I'll answer these already in the vlog. These are the givens. What are my favorite books? Who are my favorite characters? What are my favorite movies? And also least favorites, too still implies, you know, what characters, like, do I wish had died, you know, what house would I in, what, how I feel about all the houses, um, and also, like, what couples do you like, because I, one, I already talked about that in another video, but I'll still discuss it over here, like, if you have questions about, like, how do I feel about certain interpretations and whatnot, that's fine, but just don't ask, like, what are your favorites, because, like, the favorite stuff, I got that. 
But anything else, like how do I feel about this? How do I feel about that? Why do I think this happened? What do I think should have happened? Do I wish Harry Potter had lived, died? Those things. Ask me. I would love to hear what you guys think. And I will have those back up. Alright, see you later. Love you guys. Mwah. Long live Slytherin. Bitches. You can't. Hogwarts. Hogwarts. Man, I'm glad I'm back.